What's going on, Muscle Monsters? Alain Gonzalez here, and welcome to part two of the Instagram Q&A. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure to do so at Muscle Monsters, where I'll post a picture with a caption stating for you to ask questions, and then I'll answer them in a video like this one. So without further ado, let's jump right in. The first question is, why do people have two seasons, one for cutting and one for bulking? Um, it's pretty simple, right? Uh, most people understand that if they want to build muscle maximally, they have to eat more calories than they expend. Um, likewise, they understand that if they want to burn fat, they're going to have to be in a caloric deficit, all right? Unless, of course, they are a novice trainee, this is the only way that they are going to maximize their efforts. If you try to chase both rabbits, you catch neither. And this is why I recommend that you do, in fact, break your phases up. Next question. What are your thoughts on dirty foods like pizza, sausages, fries when bulking? All right. I don't like to um, categorize food that way, dirty versus clean. Just doesn't make sense to me. I think it's better said uh, some are nutrient dense and some are less nutrient dense. But at the end of the day, all food has nutrients, right? And so as long as you are meeting those nutrient requirements, those foods are all okay. In fact, they may actually help you reach um, your macronutrient and calorie and even micronutrient goals for the day. So um, although you probably don't want to indulge in, you know, things like donuts and pizza, uh, just simply because of the calorie makeup, right? You got to consider how much fat they have. And so that might easily put you over your calories or just over your fats. Um, without hitting maybe your carbs or your protein. So those are all things you gotta consider, but ultimately these foods are okay. Just make sure that your overall diet is well balanced, right? You're getting enough protein, enough carbs, a good deal of fat, and your vitamins, minerals, and your fiber. Next question. You've probably already answered this before, but what inexpensive snacks should I be eating throughout the day as a skinny guy? For me, one of the biggest um, things that helped me gain weight and build muscle in the beginning were, believe it or not, peanut butter sandwiches. A lot of calories, um, very easy to consume. I loved them. That didn't hurt. And um, they were something that I could pretty much take anywhere and it was very cheap. All I had to do was buy the bread and the peanut butter. So if you're on a budget, um, that's one thing I would recommend. Uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck there. Um, also, things like oatmeal. Um, Another thing I would highly recommend is, and this may not be considered a snack, but um, pasta. Pasta is great because it's calorie dense, the macronutrients are solid, and it's very cheap. Not only that, but you can make a bunch all at once and kind of spread it out over time uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, cooking every couple of hours. Another thing is uh, tuna sandwiches, right? If you um, have maybe mayo, uh, obviously you want to limit that. Um, but if you have mayo, you have your tuna and your bread that's very cheap. And again, like the peanut butter sandwiches, you can kind of take them anywhere and uh, you can consume them pretty easily. Next question. Align, loving your work, bro. Keep it up. Could you talk about different splits? I'm following your advice and training every other day, but struggling to hit each muscle group every 48 hours. Um, here's the thing. People get so caught up on hitting each muscle group every 48 hours. That's not really what's important. What's important is that you are maximizing protein synthesis throughout the week while still on a split that's allowing you to progress, right? So... You don't have to worry about hitting your chest and then waiting two days and then hitting your chest again. What you wanna do is ensure that you're hitting your chest twice within that week to ensure that you are, number one, elevating protein synthesis sufficiently enough, and number two, again, still on a program that's going to allow you to recover and maximize your performance in the gym. Next question. Thoughts on carb cycling while bulking? Don't think I should ever be in a deficit while trying to bulk. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be in a deficit when you're bulking. It really doesn't make any sense. But just because you're carb cycling doesn't mean you will be in a deficit um, on one of those days or on any day. 
that's all going to be determined on how you cycle the carbs. Now, um, I did write an entire article, probably one of my best pieces, um, and I submitted it to T Nation. That's where it's at. That's where you can read it. And I go over the ins and outs of carb cycling. I also go over a solid strategy that you can follow if you do decide to carb cycle. Um, I'm going to link that below. Um, so go check that out. Anybody else who's interested in knowing a little bit more about carb cycling, that's the article that I would recommend. Next question. Post on high protein, low calories for those of us cutting. Um, I think it's a big misconception that we should go uh, low carbs and fats and high protein just because we're cutting. You got to remember, number one, you need those fats, right? Otherwise, number one, uh, your dick's not going to work anymore at some point. And number two, you're not going to be maximizing your recovery, things of that nature. As for carbs, you also want to have carbs because that's going to be your main source of energy in the gym. And if you don't have carbs to fuel those workouts, your performance is going to plummet and thus you're going to lose your muscle mass despite getting enough protein. So that's not something I recommend. I recommend... Uh, a decent amount of protein. I recommend high carb and then moderate or low fats. Obviously, the amounts for each is going to be determined by your individual needs, um, but I would never go high calorie and I mean, excuse me, high protein and then low fat and low carbs. Next question What can I do to be constantly motivated to eat and train? Find your why. If you don't have a big enough reason, as to why you should be eating a certain way and training consistently, then you're never gonna do it because it's going to be much easier for you to cop out of training or eating right if you don't have a good enough reason uh, to do so. Now also, I have gone into more detail about motivation uh, for training and dieting and I will link that video below, but that's just the gist of it. You gotta find your why. If you don't have a good enough reason to do it, chances are you're not gonna do it. Next question. Get stronger to get bigger versus getting a pump slash high rep work. What builds more muscle? Um, here's what you have to understand, and it's something that I don't think a lot of people do, is that just because the goal is to get stronger doesn't mean that you're not training in a higher rep range. I don't care if you're doing five reps, 10 reps, or 15 reps. The goal is always going to be to get stronger. If you're not progressing, you're not going to grow. That said, it doesn't matter if you're progressing in the five reps, 10 reps, 15 reps. Progress is progress, and as long as you are getting better, you are going to get bigger, all right? So don't look at it as you know one versus the other, right? They work uh, synergistically okay you have to train for strength but that doesn't mean that the strength has to come from doing sets of three although that's probably going to be the most efficient way to do so um, it's not the only way so instead of kind of thinking about it as uh, should I get stronger or just get a pump you should be doing both train in whatever rep range your program says but also focus on progression you got to remember if you're doing 135 for sets of 15 on the bench and you go to 140, that is getting stronger and that's the goal. Next question. Good day, Align. Can't get to the gym as much as I want. Two kids under two. In your opinion, what's a good split for three days a week training? Very simple. Full body. And if you're looking for a solid full body training program that you can run three days a week, whether you are uh, a beginner, intermediate or maybe even advanced, then download Mass in a flash. It's completely free. I'll link it down below. Just go there, put your name and your email address. You'll get instant access to that. And that concludes the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Muscle Monsters, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.